All right, everybody, it's about time we get into abstraction. Overall, abstraction is the process of hiding implementation details and showing only the essential features. Think of it like this. If I'm teaching somebody how to drive, I'm not going to open up the hood of the car and explain how the engine works. I'm instead going to tell the user that the gas pedal is to drive and the brake is to stop the car. Abstraction is the process of hiding implementation details. A user just needs to know what the gas pedal is and what the brake is. We can make classes and methods abstract by using this abstract keyword. This provides a few benefits. Abstract classes can't be instantiated directly. Abstract classes can also contain abstract methods, which must be implemented. They can also contain concrete methods, which are the opposite. These are real and physical methods, you could say. Concrete methods are inherited. So I know that's a lot. Let me give you an example. We're going to be creating an abstract class that can't be instantiated directly meaning we can't create any objects from this class. In this demonstration, we're going to create some shape objects. Shape is going to be the parent. Then we'll have circle, triangle, and rectangle classes as its children. So we're going to go to new, Java class. We will create a shape class. Then a class for circle. A class for triangle. then a class for rectangle. Our shape class is going to be abstract. We can't create any shape objects. For the word of class, we will add this keyword of abstract. We can't create any shape objects. It's an abstract class. Now, circle, triangle, and rectangle are going to extend the shape class. Circle extends shape. Circles are a type of shape. Same thing applies with triangle and rectangle. Let's attempt to create a shape object. Shape, shape equals new shape. And we get an error message. Shape is abstract. It cannot be instantiated. Since shape is an abstract class, we can't create any objects from this class. It adds a little bit of security to our program. We don't want anybody creating any generic shape objects. We want them to create a certain kind of shape, a circle, a triangle, or a rectangle. But we can create some circles, triangles, and rectangles, so let's do so. Circle, circle equals new circle. Triangle, triangle equals new triangle. Rectangle, rectangle equals new rectangle. We can create circle, triangle, and rectangle objects, just not shape, because it's an abstract class. That's good though, because we don't want people creating any shape objects. It's too generic. We want a user to pick a certain kind of shape. Abstract classes can contain abstract methods and concrete methods. An abstract method is a method which must be implemented by its children. Within our shape class, we will define an abstract method. Use the abstract keyword. Let's list a return type of a double. Every child class of the shape class needs an area method. I'll add a comment that this is an abstract method. Abstract. So within our circle class, we get an error message. Circle must either be declared abstract or implement the abstract method of area. Circle is going to inherit this abstract method of area from its parent of shape. We need to implement this method, so let's do so. This is going to be an overridden method. We need the annotation of override. We need to define a method of area. But we'll fill it in momentarily. Just for now, I'm going to return zero. And now that error message goes away. Since we inherit from the shape class, and there's an abstract method of area, we need to implement this method. This helps to ensure consistency among the children classes. You can see that we're missing that same method with triangle and rectangle. So why don't we copy this code where we override the area method and paste it. We'll be filling these in later. Going back to our shape class, abstract classes can contain abstract methods and concrete methods, which are kind of the opposite. 
Concrete methods are defined and inherited within an abstract class. Let's define a method of display. This method doesn't return anything. The return type is void. We'll just output the following. This is a shape. I'll add a comment that this is a concrete method. In an abstract class, a concrete method is inherited. Within our circle, triangle, and rectangle classes, we don't need to implement it. We don't need to override this method. It's inherited. Going back to our main Java file, if I was to take my circle object, call the display method, we get the following output. This is a shape. And that applies with triangle and rectangle too. Triangle.display, rectangle.display. This is a shape, this is a shape, this is a shape. This concrete method of display was inherited from the shape class, their parent. Now we'll define the area methods. Area is an abstract method. That means that the children classes have to define it. To calculate the area of a circle, we'll need a radius. We'll define that as an attribute. All circles will have a radius attribute, double radius. And we'll need a constructor, a circle constructor. When we construct a circle object, we have to pass in a double for the radius. This dot radius equals the radius we receive. Now the formula to calculate the area of a circle will be, we're going to return access the math class, access the constant of pi from the math class, times radius, times radius. That's how to calculate the area of a circle. Now for our triangle, we need the following. A double for base, a double for height. We need a constructor. Parameter one will be double base. Parameter two will be double height. This dot base equals base. This dot height equals height. For the area, we will return 0 0.5 times base times height. Then we have a rectangle. Double length, double width. We need our constructor of rectangle. Parameter one will be double length. Parameter two will be double width. This dot length equals length. This dot width equals width. Return length times width within the area method. And we're good. Let's go back to our main class. We're missing those arguments. We have to pass them in. For our circle object, let's say the radius is three. For the triangle, the base and height will be four and five. The rectangle, the length and width will be six and seven. We are going to output using system.out.println, take our circle called the area method. Then do this with triangle and rectangle. Here's the area of each of our shapes, our circle, our triangle, and our rectangle. So that's the abstract keyword. Abstraction is the process of hiding implementation details from a user and showing only the essential features. That's why we've created a shape class that's abstract. We can't directly create any shape objects. We want a user to create a certain kind of shape, whether it's a circle, a triangle, or a rectangle. A shape is too generic. An abstract class can contain abstract methods, which need to be implemented by the children classes, or concrete methods, which are inherited, and the children classes will have access to it. All right, everybody, so that is abstraction and the use of the abstract keyword in Java.